Good evening, Victory Tribe, and welcome to Victory Now. My name is Paige Grayson. This evening, I'm going to talk about forgiveness heals. Forgiveness bridges the gap to healing. Unresolved hurts from a friend, a family member, if it be physical, uh, verbal, and, it's, and you feel that it's abusive, it can result in unforgiveness. I'm going to use me as an example. So some of you who know me uh, had belt, dealt with some health issues that was a result from a spider bite. <clears throat> but at the same exact time that that happened, I had also been faced with an unresolved hurt from a family member that I had carried unforgiveness for 20 years, but I had just suppressed it so far back that I didn't think about it until it was like, boom, right there in my face. So everything started at the same time. I was not wanting to forgive him. He did not ask for forgiveness. He did not take accountability for what he had done. But when I had spoke with Pastor Rhea and she explained to me that no one causes us to have unforgiveness. We allow them to control our emotions. So when I started putting that in perspective and I took it to the Lord and I prayed about it, as I was releasing the unforgiveness to God, I was also receiving healing throughout my body. The best way I can describe it, it's like pulling out a wooden splinter from a very tender area in your body. And it hurts like none other when you're digging out those pieces and those nerve endings are being tortured. But when you get it all out and it all gets cleaned out and you wash it out, maybe a little peroxide, maybe a little antibiotic ointment, there is such a release of peace in that tender area. Well, a metaphor to me is that tender area would be our heart. And when someone, either maliciously or sometimes it's accidental, sometimes we take things in a wrong manner that somebody didn't mean to say it that way, but instead of just stopping right then and saying, hey, I need to talk to you about what you just said, or I need to talk to you about what you did yesterday, we can let it fester. And when we let it get in our tender spots, and that like a splinter, and we allow it to fester, and then it starts oozing out like a poison, and then when it finally just starts to scab over, it becomes a hardened callus. I'm going to look at some scriptures with you, and we're going to see what Ephesians 4 says about unforgiveness. It says, let all bitterness and indignation and wrath, just basically let it go. Banish it from you because and become useful and helpful and kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God Christ forgave you and me. And I've had people say to me, but my situation is different. You don't understand. My so-and-so did this to me, or even worse, my so-and-so did this to my child. And when I know as being a mama bear, when you start picking on my kids, it can rile up a little bit more than when you're picking at me. But the thing is what he just said right here, forgive one another as God Christ forgave you. So there was one Jesus, one Savior, and one cross. And when he went to that cross, he took it all. He didn't take just mine. He didn't take just yours. He didn't take just so-and-so down the street. He took it all. It's not some of, there is no other word that can replace the word all. He took it all. And a lot of times the hardest forgiveness to allow to happen is on yourself. And I'm going to give you some examples of what I found in a medical paper that was released in June 27th of 2022. Dr. Stephen Standiford, he was the chief of surgery at the Cancer Treatment Center of America. He wrote, refusing to forgive makes people sick and keeps them that way. With that in mind, forgiveness therapy... And therapy comes from the Greek, Greek word in the Bible, therapo, is now being used to help treat diseases such as cancer. It's important to treat emotional wounds and disorders because they really can hinder. He also goes on to say that someone's reactions to their treatment, even someone's willingness to pursue any treatment. Dr. Standiford explained, also, according to research done by Dr. Michael Berry, he's a pastor and the author of the book, Forgiveness Project, he stated that all cancer patients, 61% have 
unforgiveness issues, and of those, more than half are severe. Harboring these negative emotions, this anger and hatred, creates a state of chronic anxiety. Now, that can be medically proven because when you're in a chronic state of anxiety, your body will produce an excessive amount of adrenaline and cortisol, and that is your natural fight or flight. When that depletes the production of our natural killer cells, that is our immune system, and that in which our body is the foot soldier in the fight against cancer. Pastor Barry also stated that the first step in learning to forgive is to realize how much we have been forgiven by God. When a person forgets from the heart, which is the gold standard, as we see in Matthew 18, we find that we are able to find a sense of peacefulness and quiet, often the patient's referred to as a feeling of lightness. Most people don't realize what a burden they've been carrying until they let it go. We can look at Proverbs 17, 22. A happy heart is good medicine, and a joyful mind causes healing, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. So self-forgiving, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all righteous, unrighteousness. And that's in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another, that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And that's found in the word in John, I'm sorry, James 5, 16. So to sum it up, Forgiveness is a sin because Jesus forgave us. And when we accept our salvation in Christ, we become part of the body of Christ. So we are Christ lives in us. So if Christ forgave me, then that means I forgive you. And that's how that works. So when Jesus said, I have to go so I can leave with you much more, the Holy Spirit. And as we were talking in Red Thread, there was only one Jesus. But when Jesus left and we receive the Holy Spirit. Then it's like when you smashed, a, have you ever smashed a spider and a whole bunch of little ones go running out? Okay, well, that's kind of icky analogy, but that's kind of what happened when Jesus went to the cross. He took all of our burdens, all of our sickness, all of our infirmities, all of our unforgiveness. And in turn, he gave all of us the Holy Spirit. So to not forgive is actually a sin. So I'm going to look at putting the word to work. Sometimes forgiving someone can be very difficult, especially if that person has repeatedly hurt you and offended you. Is there someone in your life you're having a hard time forgiving? Remember the gracious gift of God, forgive, give God's forgiveness to you. As you have received forgiveness, as me too, we are called to extend forgiveness to others. So ask God to help you forgive as you also have been forgiven. Father God, we just come to you right now as humbly as we know how, and we thank you for everything that you are doing in each one of our lives. Father, we just ask that you give us the revelation and the humbleness to have the understanding that you have our battles for us, and they're not ours to take on. So we ask that you, so you seek in our hearts and any bit of unforgiveness, even though we might not realize that we have, or that that we're just not wanting to turn loose of, we just right now give it to you, Father God. We just put it into your, your condition, your dumpster. We just put our trash into your dumpster, and we thank you, Father God, that we will be released of any heaviness, of any unforgiveness, and that we will feel the peace of only you can give us by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the direction of the Holy Spirit and the discernment. And right now, Father God, we just pray for anybody that in our life that we have an ill will feeling. We just bring them to you right now, Father God, and we ask that you bless them and that you let them see inside their own hearts for forgiveness. And we just ask that we they find you for their salvation and they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. And above all things, we just thank you so much 
for everything and everybody that you have touched in our lives. Thank you.